Invite, invite mankind, invite the world, invite the creation to Allah's paradise. How can we invite others to the way of Allah when we ourselves are not traveling that path? I want to motivate myself and you. I want to motivate us to be on the path to Jannah. Jan Jan if we desire Jannah, we will want other people to desire Jannah. But if we ourselves don't want paradise, if we ourselves have not made paradise our goal, how can we expect others to be enthusiastic about the goal? Other religions as well have some concept, but not like our paradise. Hinduism and Buddhism. The ultimate goal of Hinduism is moksha. And the ultimate goal of Buddhism is nirvana. These goals, it is not a jannah. It is not something that is a physical entity. Rather, it is an intellectual concept. It is a theoretical, abstract reality. Both are very similar. These concepts, they signify the end of the infinite cycle of life and death. Because these religions, they are called the dharmic religions. They believe in dharma. They believe in karma. That a person will be resurrected over and over again based upon the actions that he has done in one life, he shall suffer in the next life. Until finally a state is reached. For the Hindus, it must exist of the elite of the Brahmins. And of the Buddhists, anybody can strive to achieve nirvana. When they achieve this state, they cease to be resurrected over and over again. They break away from the cycle, infinite cycle of life. And to them, this is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to break away from life. In other words, the ultimate goal of life is to break away from life and become something non-existent. No doubt these goals inspire some people. And it is because of this that we find Many Westerners converting to Buddhism and Hinduism, they're interested in these things. But the reality is for most people, these goals are abstract. These goals are not tangible. And that is why the reversion to Islam is much, much more. People convert to Islam millions and millions because there is a more realistic motivational factor. And of course, because of the theology and other things as well. So the Islamic goal of Jannah, is a goal that really and truly inspires each and every human being to want to be there. It is a goal that is understandable and imaginable. It is a goal that is realistic. It is a goal that appeals to us as human beings. And it is a goal that as it exists is unique to the religion of Islam. No other religion believes in the concept of Jannah as we do. It must be said, however, that Jannah, even though it is one of our primary goals, it is not the ultimate and the only goal for which we worship Allah. No, not at all. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for many reasons. And I have given a talk recently in India as well called the journey of worship, which I elaborated upon this concept, the journey of worship. In that talk, I basically emphasized the ultimate reason why we worship Allah is because Allah is worthy of being worshipped. Not because of Jannah, not to be safe from Jahannam. The ultimate reason is because Allah is so magnificent and so perfect and so beautiful that the creation automatically wants to show service and show servitude and show humbleness to Allah. We worship Allah because Allah is worthy of worship. But we are who we are and we need a carrot and we need a stick. We need an incentive and we need something to be scared of. And so as a mercy to us, created Jannah and Jahannam to act as incentives, but not the primary or the only incentives. Now, brothers and sisters, since Jannah is a creation of Allah, Allah created Jannah and Allah said, this is my Jannah. One of the verses in the Quran says, what khuli jannati, enter my Jannah. Since Allah created Jannah and Allah is the owner of Jannah, 
every single owner has the right to choose his guests. When you have your house, you have the right to invite certain people and disqualify other people. That is your privilege because you own the house. If you invite 10 people and you don't invite another 10, these 10 cannot stand up and say, you have done me injustice. Why didn't you invite me? It is not their right to be invited. It is your house and you have held a feast and you can invite anybody whom you want. Allah created Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites people to Jannah. Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannati wal maghfirati bi idni. One verse in the Quran, Allah calls people to Jannah. So Allah is inviting people to Jannah. If Allah had wanted brothers and sisters, Allah could have restricted Jannah to an elite of mankind. Allah could have said, Jannah is only for XYZ, is only for this ethnicity, is only for this group of people, it's only for this era, it's only for this civilization. And if Allah had done so, it would have been just because it is Allah's right to do as He pleases. And Allah created Jannah and He has the right to invite whomever He pleases. But Allah Azza wa Jal is all merciful. Allah Azza wa Jal is Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. Allah Azza wa Jal is all loving, He is all wadud. And therefore, He left the invitation to Jannah open for all of mankind. Anybody can enter Jannah. Everybody should strive to enter Jannah. There is no restriction of age. There is no restriction of gender. There is no restriction of class. There is no restriction of caste. There is no restriction of whatever, wherever language you are, your skin color, nothing at all. Allah has left Jannah open to all of mankind, but He has placed a condition upon us and not from Him. In other words, a condition we can do and not something that is beyond our control. If Allah had said only people of a certain caste could enter Jannah, it is not my control which caste I am born in, which ethnicity I am born in, which language I speak, which skin color I have. This is beyond my control. But Allah has placed a condition that is within our control. And that condition, Allah has emphasized many, many, many times in the Quran. Those who believe and do good deeds. They shall have Jannah. Those who believe and do good deeds. Give glad tidings to those who believe and do good deeds that they shall have many Jannat. This Jannah, Allah says, has been prepared for the righteous. Allah says this Jannah has been prepared for the Muttaqoon. Allah says this Jannah has been prepared for the Salihun. Allah says this Jannah has been prepared for those who do good. The Jannah that Allah has prepared the keys lie in our hands. It is in our grasp to enter it. Allah has told us about it and He's told us how to get there. And He has also told us what will disqualify people from entering Jannah. There is only one thing that disqualifies a person from entering Jannah. Only one. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ Whoever does shirk with Allah, whoever worships another being besides Allah, that person, Allah says, Jannah has been made haram for him. Haram Allahu alayhi jannah. One condition disqualifies you when you don't worship Allah alone. And so Allah has laid out for us the conditions to Jannah. And He has laid out for us that which disqualifies us from Jannah. And similarly, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many, many a hadith, we don't have time to go into detail, but just one hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever believes in Allah and His Messenger and establishes the prayer, he prays regularly, and he fasts the month of Ramadan, he has a right over Allah that Allah causes him to enter Jannah. A right, obligation. In other words, you can demand from Allah. And this is a right Allah has given us. Oh Allah, your Prophet ﷺ said, if I believe in you and I believe in your Prophet and I worship you and I pray and I fast and I give zakat, if I do the minimum requirements of Islam, your Prophet ﷺ has said, I have a right to Jannah. This is a right that Allah has blessed us with. Once again, the keys and condition is in our hand. Oh,
Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if we agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument yeah, to be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Insano ka mustakbil tamir karne ko एक कार बार जो निकला है पैगाम लिए अल्लाह का फरमान है कुरान मजीद सारी इंसानियत के लिए पैगाम है मुआशरे की इसलाह के वास्ते चुन के कुरानो सुन्नत के रास्ते हर एक मसाले का हल इस्लाम में मौजूद है इस दुनिया में हकीकी अमन सलामती उसी वक्त कायम हो सकती है जब दुनिया की कौम है अकीदे तो अपना ले हक की फतेह याबी के लिए सच्ची कामयाबी के लिए हम घंटो व्हाट्सएप फेसबुक और मुख्तलिफ खेलों में अपना वक्त बर्बाद कर रहे हैं हमें वही सियात मुसलमान अल्लाह के आकाम के मुताबिक जिंदगी गुजार रहे हैं मिलिए अमन अरमा सामिया जुले इब्राहिम पटेल उलसूम अरमार हुमैद अरमार सुलेखा अंसारी अहमद सोराखिया फरहान अहमद सोमानी और अर्श जगाड़े सबसे बेहतरीन मुसलमान की मिसाल हमारे आखिरी पैगंबर मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम है निकल पड़ा है इस्लामी नौजवानों का कारवा ताकि इंसानियत को दिलाई जा सके अपनी मंजिल कारवाने मुस्तकबिल नेक्स्ट ऑन पीस टीवी انه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنه ومأواه النار whoever does shirk with allah whoever worships another being besides allah that person allah says jannah has been made haram for him harram allah alayhi aljanna one condition disqualifies you when you don't worship allah alone and so allah has laid out for us the conditions to Jannah and he has laid out for us that which disqualifies us from Jannah and similarly the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam many many a hadith we don't have time to go into detail but just one hadith in Sahih Bukhari the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever believes in Allah and his messenger and establishes the prayer he prays regularly and he fasts the month of Ramadan he has a right over Allah that Allah causes him to enter Jannah a right obligation in other words you can demand from Allah and this is a right Allah has given us oh Allah your Prophet وسلم, said if I believe in you and I believe in your Prophet and I worship you and I pray and I fast and I give zakat if I do the minimum requirements of Islam your Prophet وسلم, has said I have a right to Jannah this is a right that Allah has blessed us with once again, the keys and condition is in our hand. Brothers and sisters, time is short and we have to shorten the lecture even more. I conclude this topic by re-emphasizing if we ourselves want to invite other people to Jannah, then we must be living examples of those who are walking to Jannah. If we want to call others to this Jannah, this Darus Salam, the ultimate abode of peace. This is the name of Jannah, the abode of peace, Darus Salam. The ultimate peace will be in Jannah. We want to invite mankind to peace. But before we invite others, we have to be role models ourselves. We have to be examples ourselves. We ourselves must strive to go to Jannah. We ourselves must act like the people of Jannah. We ourselves must have that intention, that desire, that motivation that is manifested in our actions that we are going to Jannah. And when we have that desire, then and only then 
will we instill others to also want to enter this abode of peace. Wallahu yad'u ila al-jannati wa wal maghfirati bi idhni. Allah is the one who invites everyone to Jannah. It is our job to respond to this call, to accept the invitation and pass on this invitation to all of mankind. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us all amongst the people of Jannah. May Allah Azza wa Jal shelter us in his shade on the day of judgment. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive all of our sins. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us to drink from the pool of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us to cross over the bridge over Jahannam. Let us cross over it with peace and serenity and let us get to the other side so that we can enter Jannah, the Jannah that has been promised for the pious and righteous. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala di Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We will now open this forum to questions and answers. But before doing so, there are some rules which pertain to questions and answers. First of all, all questions will be from this topic, invite the world to paradise. If you have a question on a fiqh issue or some other general issue in Islam not related to this topic, Please save it for a later time. We have placed, I believe, three microphones, one in the ladies section, one in the back for the brothers, and one here in the front. So if you can, please make your way. When you are at the microphone, please do stand in a queue and do not bunch up around the microphone. And do not ask your question until you are prompted to ask your question by either the microphone attendant or myself. If there are any non-Muslims with us, you have a priority for asking your questions. So if you make your way to any of the volunteers which you see in green vest, they will assist you in getting to the microphone so that you may ask your question. Anyone who is shy and does not wish to approach the microphone may write down their question and give it to any of the volunteers, either from the brothers or sister side. And inshallah, written down questions will receive second priority to those questions which are asked at the microphone. Again, I ask that everyone keep their questions brief to the topic, follow the etiquettes which Islam teaches us. And at this point, if our speaker is ready, we will open the floor for questions and answers. I guess we'll start with the mic in the back, the brother in the rear. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdul Jabbar, and uh, I am in uh, business, I run a company. My question specifically relates to one aspect of paradise. You've talked about the serenity inhabitants of Jannah, but there are many Muslims who unfortunately have members of their own family or very dear friends who do not die in a state of Islam. So is their serenity, their happiness affected if this happens. Is there anything in the Quran and the Hadith that mention of those who have entered paradise, but the members of their family or friends have not? Thank you. Zakallah khair for that question. The place known as Jannah is free of any grief or worries. There shall be no grieving in paradise at all. There shall be no regret there shall be no remorse. There shall be no tinge of any desire that is unmet or unfulfilled. And this shall begin from the entering of Jannah. So it is possible that some people might have some regret and remorse on the day of judgment when they see others. It is possible, but not after the entering of Jannah. Because Jannah itself is Darus Salam, the place and abode of complete peace. And when the people of Jannah enter Darus Salam, Allah Azza wa Jal, who is As Salam, will greet them with the greetings of Salam. Salamun qawlam min Rabbir Rahim. And when Allah sends His Salam upon the people of Jannah, then from that moment onward, no thorn shall prick them, no evil shall touch them, no remorse shall ever pass their heart. How can it when As Salam has sent His Salam upon the people of Darus Salam? 
Jazakallah khair, brother. At this time, I'd like uh, to take a question from the sister section. If there are any questions from the sister section. I'm asking this question for somebody else. So uh, the question is, you said that there are beautiful women for men in paradise. Are there beautiful men for women? MashaAllah, very brave question from the sister. But in her braveness, she wrote the question and handed it over and didn't ask it herself. And this is a sign of modesty as well. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Modesty should not prevent you from seeking knowledge. So I think this is the ideal methodology that you wanted to learn, but you didn't want to uh, identify yourself. So you wrote the question down. Excellent. This is a very honest question and it needs to be asked. Many of the people are confused. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about beautiful women for the men? And he does not talk about handsome men for the women. Will not the women also be blessed with a mate and spouse in Jannah? And the reason for this is that, generally speaking, it is not in the nature of women that these types of details be exposed and told. Look, even the sister did not want to be known and identified. And this is a sign of perfection that the woman wants to be modest. These types of issues do not form public conversation. And so the Quran does not emphasize this point. It doesn't publicize it. But the reality is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَعْزَبُ There is nobody in paradise who shall remain single. So if a sister was married to a person in this world, they shall be in Jannah eternally together. And that will be sufficient for her. She will not feel any jealousy. She will not feel any envy that the man has been blessed with other hur in Jannah. But if a sister were single and she did not marry or she did not have a husband or her husband, we seek Allah's refuge, was so bad he didn't make it to Jannah. She made it but he didn't make it. Then Allah Azza wa Jal has indeed a creation for them as well. But in the perfection of the Quran and to manifest the nature of men and the nature of women, Allah Azza wa Jal did not describe this creation as he described that given to the men. So, the answer to your question in a brief response is yes. There are indeed creations that Allah has created for the women. Some ulama have said that they will be married to a person of this world. And others have said, no, there is another creation in Jannah. Whatever the case might be, our goal is to get to Jannah. Once we're there, we will be given everything in it as well. So don't worry. Once you get to Jannah, you will have all that you desire, inshaAllah ta'ala. Please state your name and occupation, sister. Assalamu alaikum. My yes. name is Aisha Zawahir. I'm pursuing my Islamic studies. I'm a freelance writer. I did my Islamic studies in the Madras University. I have a question regarding this women in Jannah. I have come across women scholars stating that this word does not refer to women actually. What do you have to say about this as an Islamic scholar? The question states, as you know, that some of the people are saying that the word hur does not refer to a female companion in Jannah. And this is the belief of some of the, what we call the modernists or progressives. Some of the people who are, to be honest, so embarrassed by their religion that they want to change it and they want to make it in a way that they think it will be acceptable uh, in the West or in other places. This is a modern phenomenon. I do not know of any classical scholar of any of the groups of Islam, Sunni, Shia, Mu'tazila, Khariji, none of the classical scholars of Islam held this uh, position or opinion. This is a completely new opinion and it is being propagated by certain sectors uh, in the Western world in particular. And they say, al hur al in refers to a white, luscious grape. It is a fruit. This is what they say, al in is a grape. It is not a, a, a female companion. And really, it is so easy to refute this concept simply by reading the descriptions of the hur in in Jannah. And I want you to read these descriptions, how Allah Azza wa Jal describes the hur in Grapes are not described the way hur in are described. And I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Wakawa'iba atrab and other things. No grape can be described the way that Hurun in. Another point being, Allah Azza wa Jal clearly says in the Quran about the Hurun in, 
لم يطمثهن انس قبلهم ولا جان no human being or jinn has polluted them meaning they are virgins this is clear in the quran there's no such thing as a virgin grape or a widowed grape okay so when you read the descriptions of the ur in the quran and especially in the sunnah there is no question whatsoever that it is referring to a female companion where they get this from they get it from the fact that there is a word in another language called Syriac where Hur, if you mispronounce it and you add another mark to it, it becomes something like a grape in that language. And they say this is something from Syriac language. But if I speak to you in Urdu and you try to understand in English, that's a problem. The Quran is in Arabic and for them to assume it is in the Syriac language, it's a problem. So the reality is this position has no scholarly or academic merit to it whatsoever. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortune.